Hello traders and welcome to the Trading Fanatic channel. My name is Ilya and in this educational video we're gonna talk about supply and demand areas, zones, how to draw them correctly and how to trade them and what exactly are supply and demand zones. So if you're new to the channel make sure to support it by clicking the subscribe button and eventually tap that like button if you like the video. So let's go straight for the explanation first. Okay, let's start by defining what is supply and demand zone. So those are actually economic concepts. So for example, if the demand of a certain product rises, so more people want to buy and the price rises. And when the supply gets too high, then prices drop because sellers want to sell their products. But we're not economists, so we don't care about this. So basically a demand zone will always be on the bottom. Of, of where price action is and the supply will be on top of price action. So those are areas where buyers and sellers uh, want to sell. So those are like a high probability points of the market where you can buy and sell. So those will be uh, most often extreme lows and extreme highs and places where price action reacts very violently. So we're gonna switch right now to the charts and see a real-time example of supply and demand zone, how to draw them and how to trade them. So let's go. Okay guys, so here we are on USDJPY. That was a perfect example of a supply area which I'm gonna show you right now. I personally traded it and I'm, I'm going to show you first how to draw those major supply and demand zones and then we will switch to the minor ones. So when you're drawing supply and demand, you should always scroll down a little bit, see more as much as possible price action and try to locate the highest and the lowest points of the market. So I can immediately see this one here. So you should uh, plot a horizontal line here. So go to your horizontal line and you can see how price action here is respecting this kind of zone here. You see a resistance, 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 a lot of failures to break above. So this is a very major supply zone, very major one. So uh, if you want to be like more precise, you can draw it down a little bit. You want to always include wicks, bodies here, rejection, rejection, a lot of rejections here. And then you should be drawing a little rectangle because that is a zone. So you want to catch as much as possible price action. So here in this occasion, I caught the bodies of these ones here and probably I'm going to catch this week as well. And those that are faking out here as well. So you can draw it very, very big, but I don't like that, that bigger zones. So I will just take this week here and you can see we have our first supply area. You can see every time when price action came into this area, it rejected and it didn't reject like normally, but massively. You see massive flushes. Yeah, here we have 600 pips. Here we have maybe 500. And every single time price action tapped into this area, we're seeing major reactions. So looking then to the bottom, you can immediately see where our next uh, demand zone is so just tap a quick line like this and then you start adjusting so here you see massive reaction so you always want to look for reactions of price action so you want to see price action tap here and immediately shoot so here you can see price action tap boom massive explosion here didn't quite reach it but we had another tap into the supply zone and then we went back down here again made this fake out so you Okay, that's for, for later. Uh, so then came back here and a massive push to the upside. Then your next thing you have to do is draw your rectangle. So make sure to catch as much as possible wicks here. You have wick here, wicks here. And then you have this manipulation down, which I wouldn't include because it will get too big. I like it like this. And here we have our demand area. Let me expand it. So you can you, so you can see how price action respects those areas all of the time. And so here we are with our example of a clear supply and demand areas. So I was going to tell you that you always want to make sure you wait for some kind of manipulation around those areas because they happen very, very, very often. 
So look at this example. So price tapped into this area perfectly at our line, managed to push up, but this wasn't a nice push up, right? It didn't go straight for the supply area, but we had this massive flush down break of the demand area and then we shoot it up so this is manipulation and order collection by the banks and the big players and when you see this when you have your confirmation on the lower time frames you always want to see um okay where was it okay here's the manipulation so that was actually a very nice manipulation on market close so market close and then you have the price gap up and shooting up very 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 much so let's see since the gap that is again 650 pips so that's basically how you identify daily supply and demand zones you always look for points where price action is reversing and you can see as well price tapped here into the demand and had an immediate reaction but we can see that there weren't that in, uh, that much buyers here to push the market back at the supply zone and we had a broken demand zone so a broken demand zone will potentially turn into a supply and we can see price action stay down a little bit here maybe a potential uh, demand another demand zone here we'll see and then we had the break and retest so we, when you plot these zones you they can stay because they're often always respected like you see here break retest boom and again what do we have here our supply zone gets respected again. Immediate reaction, push down, second tap, third tap, fourth kind of drives here with descending price action. And then you have this massive flush to the downside. So what do we have here as well? Looking now at the most recent price action, I told you this may be a potential demand area. And what I can see currently, so mark this one because you, you saw here without looking at the price action on the right that this was a major reaction from this level. So let's mark it like this. We catch this wick here and the bodies of these candles. Scrolling here, this was actually the flash crash at the beginning of the year. And we had this massive wick here piercing through the demand area and rejecting massively. So we know right now that this is a potential demand area. Price action traded up here. So this was the, the short I took. So that was a minor demand area, but you can see that price reacted very strongly to this kind of level here. So we had this push to the downside and then we had another push here. So I recognize this being a demand area. And guess what I waited for? I waited for this manipulation up. You can see with this wick here and then immediately bearish and go. So that was a very nice trade. I managed to get on the four hourly here. Uh, we had a lot of confirmation on the four hour you can see this four hour wick here piercing through grabbing all the stop losses of people and then from then we had a massive 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 flush down so that is more of a minor supply and demand you have to recognize them everywhere where price action reacts you have demand area here kind of broken uh, then pulled back for a lower high, broken again, and you can see the retest, how perfectly this, this doji gave us an indication that price is, price is rejected, and then we had the flush down. So those are the minor ones, but let's focus right now on this demand zone here. So we had the, the, the rejection here, and price action recently entered in this demand area. I monitored this, uh, but I didn't take any longs because the momentum was down. But we had this consolidation here. You can see price action started distributing, sorry, accumulating. It's accumulating orders in order to push up. And what did we have here? This massive push to the downside. That was actually gap, I believe. Manipulation to the downside and then traded up. And where did it trade up? To our previous demand area that is currently turning into supply so you can see by just by looking at the price action and identifying the major supply and demand areas they can serve you very well uh, for trading and support and resistance but the disadvantage of this strategy is that you will have to wait a lot of time so you can see that it took price action 290 days to reach this demand zone and it took price action 
again 230 days to reach so those are cycles kind of and when you see price action tap here you are most definitely going to have a higher uh, kind of higher probability rate so this was USDJPY very very nice examples of of uh, supply and demand area so if I remove my drawing term, uh, tools quickly and look at recent price action so how to identify recent supply and demand very very easily where is price action reacting here you see resistance 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 boom massive flush so this is our uh, supply area and just look quickly at the level 10900 perfectly respected. and you can see here interactions everywhere so do you want to sell at this level here no you don't because you want price action to get to your supply areas and that is the disadvantage again of trading supply and demand because you have to wait a long time for price action to get into your area and to give you the uh, the rejection and the price action you are looking for and again where is your demand area very easy right you just grab the wicks the bodies and here is your demand area where you will be taking profits and potentially looking for price action to tap sometime because price action often moves in waves you can see it doesn't trade uh in like in an uptrend only so we have an uptrend then we have the downtrend then we have the uptrend then we have the downtrends right now we expect the uptrend and then we'll have the downtrend so there are constant cycles in the market so make sure you always monitor for the lower time frame direction because those are a kind of here you want to capitalize more because on the daily it takes much more time but when you see price action uh, kind of get closer to a daily supply and demand you may even higher your risk and you and this will be a very high probability setups okay i hope you got this one so let's jump quickly onto another chart and see what we have there okay here we are on usd swiss so this pair will be just to show you the process of identifying supply and demand i already explained so let's see what do we have here again you have to see as much as possible price action so let's start from here here we have a massive reaction so let's put a line first here and see price action gets up here after a very massive flush gets up here and starts rejecting so this is a potential supply area and we take take it like this you have your level here and you have the highest points of those here so you see price action didn't quite manage to push down to to our demand area and started trending up in kind of a corrective fashion so this is actually a flag formation for those that trade formations you have the pull here and the flag and we have this tap here into the supply area and what do you have a daily rejection here above price action so this just says short 100 lots take profit down there <laughs> i'm joking guys so we had the tap here you can you can see after some distribution here price action managed to go down again so this is our current the uh, supply area so we see then price action reacts to this level so we tap the line here we grab the kind of this candle here to the downside and we have our rectangle too so price action then goes back here into the demand uh, into the supply area sorry and what do we have the break of it immediate reaction then another manipulation and then price action reacted but you can see on such occasions we may be forced to kind of move our our uh, supply area a little bit to the upside because uh, this indicates that those areas kind of don't get respected that well so you always want to make sure you move it to the highest point possible and you can see why we did this because price action came in here reacted immediately perfect opportunity for a short here and then again boom very bullish candle here to trigger uh, buyers and then boom another flush to the downside and then as you can see we had a broken demand area breakout retest here actually a perfect long opportunity here but you can see that price action is getting very kind of at major highs so you don't want to buy at those major highs because you can see just by looking at it those are the highs that price action has been for like for a very long time so 
the, the chance of price action finding resistance here is very high. And as we see, price action did find resistance. So then we had the break, kind of a retest lower high, another lower high and a big flush to the downside. So let's see for the recent price action, where are our zones? So we, we skipped this one, not sure why. So let's see, we should tap here a horizontal line, have a look on the left, a lot of interactions again. So let's roll our demand zone like this, catch the wick and the bodies. Okay, then what do we have? Tap here, demand area, again, rejection to the downside, manipulation, push up, perfect opportunity here. And what do you do? You catch the lowest point. Then what do we have here? We had a minor, just like USDJPY, a minor supply area here. You can see price action tapped here, reaction, return, manipulation above with this wick and riding down to our next demand area. And this takes a lot of days, guys. This is for only for the patient traders because price action took 16 days, like 15 days to come up here, re reject. And here you identify a potential demand area, as a, sorry, supply area. And then you have to wait another 25 days for price action to arrive here and reject. And that's when you will get your, your opportunity and enter like this to, to the next uh, demand area. And so you can see recently, guys, what do we have here? Tap into the supply area. So what do we expect now? We expect USD Swiss franc to go and fulfill this kind of empty space here. here. So you, you see again, bullish candle followed by a bearish candle. Four hourly, what do we have? One, two, three, again, Opportunities are always presenting themselves. It's just that you have to monitor closely. And as well here, what? just look at this beautiful chart. I can even delete this because that's too far away. Let's just focus on the recent price action. So we expect right now price action to go down. First target is here. Second target is here. We're currently short on this pair and we just have to keep waiting for days, months, weeks, whatever. So this is basically guys supply and demand. And uh, if you have any questions about uh, the process here, how do you draw it? I think I explained it very clearly, but make sure to ask me if you need further explanation. Okay, guys, I really hope you learned how to draw supply and demand zones, how to trade them correctly and what to look for when a price approaches a supply and demand zone. So if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, which will support it, go viral and a lot of people would see this and learn how to correctly use supply and demand zones. So make sure to leave me a feedback in the comments down below. Let me know what you want me to discuss. Another educational topic, mindset, psychology. Let me know. I am up to discussing everything. Thank you for staying up until now, guys. And see you next time. Peace out.